In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, one God, amen. Today we hear from the Gospel of Luke, the story of the blind man of Jericho. We hear this man who was begging at the gates of the city. And as Jesus is walking through, he starts asking the people around him, well, what is going on? Why is there a big noise? Who is coming into the city? And they tell him it's Jesus of Nazareth. Now this is interesting and it shows the faith of this blind man. He calls him the son of David. He cries out to Jesus saying, Son of David, have mercy upon me. Son of David, the son of David was not meant to be born in Nazareth. He was born in Bethlehem. The Messiah of God was to come into the world in Bethlehem. But he, the people identified Jesus as Jesus of Nazareth. So here we see a very faithful man, a blind man, who believed, who believed the prophecies of God about the Messiah that was coming, and had heard about Jesus. And even though the people who were telling him around him to be quiet and don't bother him, and referring to him as Jesus of Nazareth, the man knew. He knew who Jesus was. And he called out to Jesus, Son of David, have mercy upon me. And the amazing thing is, our Lord hears him out of all that crowd around him. And he stops and he goes to him and asks him a very simple question. What do you want? Now at that moment, yeah, sure, he's a blind man, but he's also a poor man. He's also kind of lowest in society. And Jesus is asking him, what do you want? What can I do for you? Let's put ourselves in the shoes of this blind man. What today, if Jesus would ask us, what do you want? What would we say? The man could have asked for many things. He could have been, make me the king of the world. Give me all the money in the world. He could have asked for these things and still been blind and been all right. He would have been had a great life. A lot of blind people have a great life and they're very rich and wealthy. And there have been kings who are blind. He could have asked for all these things, but he asked for one thing. He asks Jesus to let him see, to give him light so that he can see the light. The blind man asks to his eyes to be opened because his heart was already open to God. That is the God that we have, and that is the God that we should follow, and that should be our relationship with our Lord Jesus Christ. God is available to us. Our Lord is a God who came into the world not as a ruler, not as a master, but as a humble servant. And He wants a relationship with each and one of us. And that relationship is supposed to be one-on-one. -on -one. There should be no one between you and God. But do we really go out of ourselves, get out of our own ways, put our egos aside, and actually allow the Lord Jesus Christ to reveal Himself to us. So that we are not only blind physically, but also spiritually. This blind man was blind physically, but he was not blind spiritually. And he was able to recognize Jesus and be bold enough to speak to Him. And even though it seemed from his place, sitting on the side of the road, that Jesus was very far, God was very far away. But through His sincere prayer, the Lord who created all the universe walked up to Him and said, What do you want? And a person who is spiritually awake will only ask God 
Like we say so many times in our prayers in the church, what is good and profitable for us. That's something we as Christians need to learn. It's when we pray to God, we pray that His will be done. We pray that whatever is profitable for us, whatever He sees as profitable for us, not what we think is profitable for us, that we ask Him to do that for us. And if we do, and for those who have, know exactly that God is faithful and that God is real and that God speaks to us and is in our lives and very much interested in every aspect of our life and does everything that is profitable for us. And we give thanks to Him like the blind man, where we give glory to God who gives us everything that we need. Everything that we need, everything that is good for us, He wants to give to us. We just need to ask Him. Our relationship with Christ, our God we worship here, is a God who is real, a God who is present, a God who is alive, a God who became man, who walked among us, and who is still with us. Many times people say, Oh, Jesus will come back again. He's already here. The idea of Him coming back, the second coming, is not a very good translation. He's present. God is present. We say Christ is among us. And He is here present on the table with His body and blood. And whenever we pray to Him, He is present with us. But He's not fully, fully uh, revealed yet. Because once He is fully revealed, that is it. He has come in judgment. And this t world will cease and the judgment will begin. So we ask God before that time to have mercy on us, to reveal to us His will, and to accept what He has planned for us and what He wishes for us. Because there is no one, no one in this world that can love us more than Him. Not even ourselves. No one can love us more than our Lord Jesus Christ. And no one can take care of us better than He can. And we can relate to it. If you're a parent, your kids can ask you things that they think would be the best for them. But do you give them everything they ask for? No. But you give them a lot of things they need. And sometimes they are not appreciative. And do not give thanks or do not realize that what you're doing to them is good for them. That is how we are in this world. God is giving us every good thing that is in our life. But many times we don't even realize. We don't realize, we don't acknowledge that our Heavenly Father is taking care of us. That He's putting a roof over our head. That He gives us the money that is in our bank account. That He gives us the job that we work at. He gives us the people that are around us, the people that look after us, the every call that we receive of someone asking about us. It is from the Lord. And that's what we say in our prayers. Every good thing comes from above. Every good thing comes from above. And we ask for those things and those things only when we pray to the Lord to give us what is profitable for us and ask Him to do His will in our lives. Our Lord, and we're going to hear next Sunday, so today's Gospel and next Sunday's Gospel are like our continuation. So right where we left off in the Gospel of Luke today, we will continue next week. And we'll see God calling Zacchaeus down from the tree and tells him, Today I will come and dine with you. This is the God that loves us. He is a God that wants to dwell with us. He wants to come into our hearts. He wants to know us. He wants to talk with us. Our prayers are sitting down and having a conversation with God and having communion with Him. So remember, as we enter, we come closer and closer now into Great Lent and closer and closer to Pascha. That we have a God that loves us, that wants to give us what is profitable for us. 
a God that wants to enter into our house and dine with us, and share a meal with us, and love us, and take care of us. So just like the blind man today, we should sit down and be thankful to all the things that God has blessed us with, and to give glory to Him and follow Him, rejoicing, saying glory to God. Glory to God, glory to God. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.